Berry Brothers and Rudd blended malt scotch whiskies, sherry cask matured, and Isla Reserve. What are these like and are they worth getting? Stay tuned for the whiskey whistle. Hello my whiskey people, seasons greetings and Merry Christmas. Mark Kaufman here for Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from South Korea. Today we have two, two special scotch whiskies. These are blended malt scotch whiskies. Not exactly everybody's favorite. Everybody wants the single malts and they tend to push away, like push away, like Drake, push away the blended malt scotch whiskies. And I think that that needs to change. And I think malts like these two right here, we've got the Berry Brothers and Rudd blended malt scotch whiskies. Today I've got the Sherry Cask Matured and the Isla Reserve for you to check out together with me. Let's get those poured and we'll get into this together. Blended malt, for those who don't know, is simply a blend of two or more single malt scotch whiskies. Um, anyway, these are 44.2% ABV and they've been around for a while. This is maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure which iteration this is, but the ABV jumps around a little bit. So 44.2%. Let's get both of these poured. Actually, I'll pour the Sherry Cask Matured first and then the Isla second because I don't want the vapors, the peat vapors that I love to waft over while I'm trying the sherry cask uh, matured. Uh, so I'll get that one poured and I'll get you to have a, a nice close up look at the bottle. Fairly attractive packaging. And if you look close, we've got a little window and a bunch of barrels maturing. Berry Brothers and Rudd, if you're not familiar, are very famous, especially, well, not especially, but let's just say they really became famous as the producer of Cuddy Sark blended scotch whiskies, which they sold to Ed Edrington. And then Edrington sold it to La Martini Quez, I think it's called, a French uh, whiskey and spirits conglomerate that owns a few distilleries, namely Glen Moray. So sherry cask matured, everything in here is sherry cask matured. And it states actually that, um, here we go, our classic sherry cask malt is blended from the best sherry butts to deliver a balanced expression of this uniquely engaging style. And I believe we have natural color here. Um, it doesn't expressly say so on the bottle. And my the, the Korean information on the back merely says that uh, it's uh, um, original whiskey liquid, 100%. So, but you gotta take that with a grain of salt sometimes. So we'll get this one poured. Guess I'll use that one. Sorry about the uh, very, um, what's the word? It starts with a C. Come, I'm encumbered by this setup, but it'll have to do for now. Here we go. <laughs> huge pour that's definitely an ounce and a half again um, not exactly in my uh, my original space here I have to try to build out a little makeshift studio here you can probably hear the echo um, I need to get some things on the walls to help to dampen that at least for now you can enjoy the cathedral like sound coming from my voice so there's the color, quite rich and dark. And in my previous tastings, I would say that um, I would really doubt if there's much under 10 years old in this in this uh, bottling. Um, probably maybe an average of 12 or possibly 15 years of age. And also, I should say it's very reasonable. So in Korea, I bought these for about 60,000 won, which I guess is about, what? A little bit under $40 US, $40? I guess it's about 40, maybe $42 US. Um, roughly about $60 Canadian, maybe 62. So 
much cheaper than any other single malt on the shelves in Winnipeg, Canada, where I'm from um, currently, except maybe some discounted items or maybe uh, some old bin ends or old pallet ends of things like mm, maybe your um, Glengarry, the NAS version, could be a little bit cheaper, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, all right, anyway, now... It's very fragrant, and what I'll tell you that when you first open the bottle, you're really greeted with very, very friendly, fruity, um, dried fruit, delicious sherry aromas. As the bottle oxidizes and uh, uh, breathes, while you, you're going through that over a couple of months, I think I've had this bottle for about three months, um, it really starts to change and it's developed a lightly, pleasantly brimstony note in there. And it reminds me a lot of Cavalin, Cavalin Oloroso, uh, Oloroso Cask or Oloroso Solis. It also reminds me quite a bit of some of the uh, Glendronic releases, like, amazingly, like the 21-year-old. So that gives you an idea as to the, the presence of the sherry. But um, I want to at least give you a quick look at the legs that we have here so that you can see what kind of viscosity we're working with. Okay, let's see. You know, very slow first legs here. They're just reaching the the, uh, the liquid at the bottom. Um, of course, I see my silly thumbprints all over the glass. Hopefully you don't because of the strong lights that are over here. The secondary legs are barely even starting here. Um, there we go. We just see them beginning here. So we've got something that's very, very viscous. The smells seem to me like they're older than what this should cost. Uh, the viscosity seems to tell me the same thing. Um, it, again, it doesn't mention that it's non-chill filtered. It doesn't mention that it's natural in color. Um, I'd, I'll assume that it is chill filtered and I'll assume that it is natural in color. Perhaps my friends in Denmark or Germany um, where no two ways about it, it must be disclosed on the packaging. Maybe they can let me know. Rich color, well beyond amber, well beyond gold. It's darker than, than copper. Um, I wouldn't say it's mahogany. Um, it's kind of very maple-y. Let's call it like a, a nicely polished maple wood kind of a shade. We'll get into the nose. I'll do the nose, the palate, and the finish together with you. Um, neat, and then with a little bit of water. Um, give it a, a whiskey whistle, whiskey score, and then we'll get into the Isla Reserve right afterwards. And we'll try to keep it timely, so less chatter and uh, more notes here. The nose. As I mentioned, you've got all kinds of dark fruits especially lots of prune. Scandinavian Vina Tarta. Very, very dark dried figs. The brimstone note that I mentioned. Some buttery Canadian butter tarts with raisins and, and, and currants in there. You know, if, uh, if mince pies, mince tarts weren't sweet enough, it, I, I feel like Canada, some, like they just took that and then they modified it a bit. Um, and they loaded it with, with butter and sugar. So you get this very pudding-like coating of sugar. And then you've got the... The raisins and dried fruits in there. 
it doesn't have the suet and other fruits in there, but this is what uh, a lot of Canadians eat every Christmas are these butter tarts. And some people love them so much they eat them year round. Probably why a lot of North Americans are a little bit hefty. All those butter tarts. Okay, so a butter tart, very desserty, toffee. I'll stop short at calling this chocolatey. It's not really chocolatey, but it's very toffeed. It's very dessert like. Beautiful fruitiness. And I know that some people are very sensitive to sulfur. And so the brimstone note I'm talking about here, we've got these casks and Berry Brothers and Rudd, I would say probably is high in the pecking order of, of getting excellent casks for their products. Uh, because of how long they've been in the business, contracts that they probably have in place, and also family-to-family -family relationships that they've built over hundreds, well, a hundred and something years anyway. 1698 is when it says it was established. Um, so yeah, that's three, 300 and, and some odd years. And as it sits in my glass, it's mellowing a little bit. I'm, my nose is getting acclimatized to the brimstone. And all I'm smelling is just the delicious dried fruit. Desserty toffee, fruity toffees, dark toffees. And maybe a candied orange rind tucked in there. I think it's high time to taste this. Um, so let's get into that and cheers. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Cheers, everyone. Forty four point two percent. And it's as though it's more like forty. 647. It's got more oomph to it than its strength would um, lead you to believe. Very similar to the nose. Nice fruity rush in the mouth. Toffees and desserts. Candied orange rinds, Christmas desserts. Funnily, amazingly, not funnily, but amazingly, a little bit of chocolate does appear on the palate. Kind of like Cadbury fruit and nut chocolate with nuts and raisins and whatever tucked in um, a little bit darker in the chocolate and a little bit less sweet um, so probably more like you know 40 ish percent um, chalk cocoa or whatever and um, not as sweet as your typical milk chocolate like Cadbury's And this one's great for very, very small sips. It's got so much potency with each tiny little sip. And if you're just coming into, you know, the, um, what can I say, the world of, of tasting whiskey and not just drinking it to get drunk, you may be starting out with too big of a sip. And so my suggestion to you would be just to coat your lips first and don't even actually sip it in. And just let that 
evaporate on your palate. And let your palate sort of get used to that, the strength, the alcohol, the flavors. And if it seems a little bit prickly from the alcohol at first, just back off your size of sip a little bit. Hmm, a little bit of a slight herbal essence here um, a very savory herb like like a little bit of basil um, not quite mint mm. okay time to add a little bit of water so far I'm really enjoying this And again, uh, boy, it's really cumbersome the way I've got things set up here. Okay, we're going to add, I think 10 drops will be great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that may seem like a lot to you. Uh, these are small drops. It takes about 15 drops to equal one milliliter. So we're at about 0.66 milliliters. Very, very gentle nudge to the alcohol uh, strength. And also that should do a few fun things with the hydrophobic, uh, what am I calling it? Uh, the hydrophobic uh, phobic congeners and flavors and you know all those flavors are, are chemicals are natural occurring chemicals that come from from the barley off the field from the water that grew the barley from the wind that blew in that uh, that field um, from the um, um, the place where it was um, um, uh, the wort was was heated what is that called mashing there we go um, and uh, the length of time that it was it was it was steeped, that it was brewed. Um, what kind of yeast was used, and how long was it fermented? And then after that, we have things like what type of still, the shape of still, and everything else, um, and all those things adjust and shift that. A composition of, of elements that all work together here. Of course, the biggest one is alcohol, but that just likes to carry all of these other little flavors along with it. Okay, so with a little bit of water added, much butterier, the butter tarts. The dessert-like flavors just ramping up here. The astringency is softened a little bit, and there is no detriment here to the to the range of flavors. I'll just say that it's a little bit more palate friendly perhaps a touch more of the um, the fruit and nut high cocoa chocolate all those fruits still dancing there the finish sweet really dark toffee a little bit peppery and it carries, and it carries, and it carries. This is a very, very long finish. And boy, I think you'll have a hard time finding a sherry bomb for this price that is going to excite your palate as much as this bottle here. One final sip. Hmm.
delicious. For anyone looking for the lot number of this bottle that I've got here, this is L218821. 326 and then bottled at uh, 2022, 8.22 p.m. And uh, the master blender, Ronnie Cox, industry, um, what can I say, industry veteran. Um, I think he's done a fantastic job here. And um, I think that what, whatever Barry Brothers and Rudd is paying him, they should pay him more because that's pretty fabulous. Mmm. Satisfying indeed. On to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Berry Brothers and Rudd Sherry Cask Matured, 44.2%. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 87 out of 100. You heard it, 87 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Berry Brothers and Rudd Blended Malt Scotch Whiskey. Well, well done. Very well done. Um, 87 points puts it at around my original score of the older Macallan 12 um, bottled around 2015. I think that's about the last time that it was um, really, really fabulous. Um, this is less expensive than Glendronic 12 and it's superior to that. Um, I would even go as far as to say that it's superior to Glendronic 15. And, um, hmm, the Cavalin Oloroso Oak, the 46% version, uh, these two are neck and neck, I would say. Um, and, yeah, you know, pretty hard to come by something that's as, as, as nice as this for a sherry that's not gonna break the bank. So excellent job. Okay, let me switch here. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that. Um, stay tuned for more, there's lots more to come. Again, my name is Mark, you're watching Whiskey Whistle. Merry Christmas, enjoy the holiday season, enjoy the end of the year as we have our lead up to 2024. Take care folks, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye now, oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we'll see ya.